115. This is the Sri Lanka Broadcasting Corporation. The news edited by Danushka Madhavala and read by Geethanjali Ramanaika. The headlines. The government affirms that the elections in the country would be held according to the time frame of the constitution. A joint development plan will be implemented for the Bingiri export processing zone. Buddhists all over the world celebrate the Vesak full moon poi day today. The water levels of many irrigational tanks have increased due to the prevailing rainy weather condition. Fresh gazette notification has been issued stipulating the daily minimum wage for estate sector workers. Foreign news Russia hit Ukrainian positions in Donbas with air strike and in sports Dilanta Malagam wins GT4 car race in Italy. Minister Dr. Bandhu Gunawardene says that the president has informed the cabinet that the elections in the country would be held according to the constitution. President Ranil Wickremesinghe has informed the cabinet yesterday that the presidential election will be held first this year and the election would be held before the end of this year. During the cabinet meeting held last morning, President Wickremesinghe emphasized that the presidential election should be held within the specified period this year in accordance with the constitution. The election commission officially announced on May 9 that presidential election will be held between September 17th and October 16th accordingly the presidential election will be declared between the end of July and the early part of August a joint development plan will be implemented for the Bingiri export processing zone investment zones and infrastructure facilities will be set up in the zone the Bingiri investment zone has 160 acres in the first phase 282 acres in the second phase and 666 6 acres in the third phase Five projects are currently being implemented in the Bingiri investment zone the value of the projects have been invested is about 50 million US dollars during the visit the minister met investors and discussed their problems Buddhists all over the world celebrate the Vesak full moon poi day today. Buddhists commemorate the significant events of Siddhartha Gautama's birth, enlightenment and passing away of Gautama Buddha on the Vesak full moon poi day. Issuing a message for the Vesak full moon poi day, President Ranil Wickremesinghe says that the Vesak festival is a profoundly sacred day for Buddhists worldwide, commemorating the Buddha's birth, enlightenment and passing. Buddhists in Sri Lanka along with their brethren around the globe celebrate Vesak with deep devotion. Sri Pada pilgrim season 2023-2024 ends with the dawn of Vesak full moon poi day. Chief incumbent of Sri Pada Sthana and Sanganayaka of Sabragama province venerable Bengamwe Damodinna Thera told the media yesterday that the casket of sacred relics, the statues of the deities and the regalia will be taken in four processions on Friday to Galpottavala Rajamahavihara in Palmadulla when rebel Damodinna Thera and pilgrims will be permitted to visit Sri Padastana on Vesak full moon poi day Meanwhile the prisons department say the total of 278 inmates at prisons across the island will be released today in view of Vesak day Buddha Sasana Religious and Cultural Affairs Ministry Secretary Somaratna Vidanapatna stated that the government intends to implement strict laws against those who distort the Buddha's teachings in response to a complaint made by Mahanayaka Theros to President regarding statements by various parties distorting the Buddhist doctrine the government plans to enforce strict laws against such distortions the ministry secretary said Irrigation department says that the water levels of many irrigational tanks have increased due to the prevailing rainy weather condition. Water levels of many rivers have also increased. The disaster management center says that a total of 67,865 people from 17,325 families across 13 districts have been affected by adverse weather conditions with two deaths reported. Accordingly, those in Ratnapura, Kalambo, Kegol, Anuradhapura, Kandy, Gol, Jaffna, Kalutra, Matra, Putlam, Kurnagala, Hambadura and Gampa have been affected. A total of 410 houses have been partially damaged due to the adverse weather conditions. Meanwhile, very heavy showers of about 150 mm are likely at some places in the western and Sabragama provinces and in the Kandy and Nuwarelia districts. Heavy showers above 100 millimeters are likely at some places in the northwestern province and in the Managol and Matra districts. The Department of Meteorology says southwest monsoon conditions are gradually establishing over the island 
and hence the prevailing showery and windy conditions will continue further meanwhile the med department has issued an advisory for strong winds and rough seas for naval and fishermen communities in the deep sea areas in the southern eastern arabian sea and the southeastern bay of bengal sea the red alert states that a low level atmospheric disturbance in the southwest bay of bengal has intensified into a low pressure area This news comes to you from the Sri Lanka Broadcasting Corporation. The Ceylon Electricity Board has reported over 36,900 breakdowns resulting in power interruptions to more than 300,000 consumers in the last 3 days due to inclement weather. Minister of Power and Energy Kanchan Vijayasekara said that additional service staff has been assigned to attend the breakdowns. The minister stated that the CEB management and service staff are working 24 hours to restore power to the affected consumers. Meanwhile, Vijayasekara also expressed that the consumers are unable to report power interruptions through the CB hotline 1987 they can use the sms option to 1987 with breakdown and electricity consumer number to follow use the CB care app or through cebcare.ceb.lk that is cebcare.ceb.lk A fresh gazette notification has been issued stipulating the daily minimum wage for estate workers to be 1700 rupees accordingly the extraordinary gazette number 23814/35 of April 25 to April 25th 2024 has been approved by the Minister of Labour and Foreign Employment Manush Nanyakara with a new regulation coming into effect from May 21st 2024 and that ends local news for now The main news story is brought to you by Siddhalepa Vedamahatma. President Rani Wickremesinghe announced the implementation of a new program aimed at improving the living conditions of retired security forces members. The president highlighted that in the absence of a dedicated program, some veterans have faced difficult situations. Consequently, the president has directed the State Minister of Defence, the Minister of Defence, and the Rani Wickremesinghe Authority to give special attention to this matter. President Rani Wickremesinghe made this statement yesterday during the inauguration of the headquarters complex of the Sri Lanka Ex Servicemen's Association, also known as the Home of Veterans, located at Defence Ministry Avenue, Akuregoda, Batramulla, and that was the main news story. The main news story was brought to you by Siddhalepa Vedamahatma. In Watchlight this afternoon, Buddha Sasana, Religious and Cultural Affairs Ministry Secretary Somaratna Vidana Patran has stated that the government intends to implement strict laws against those who distort the Buddhist teachings. In response to a complaint made by the Mahanayaka Thera to the President regarding statements by various parties distorting the Buddhist doctrine, the government plans to enforce strict laws against such distortions, the Ministry Secretary said. He said that based on the advice of the Mahanayaka Thera's preliminary work has already been done to amend the Temporalities Act currently in force to ensure its immediate effect and that came to you in Watchlight Coming up world news The headlines first Russia hit Ukrainian positions in Donbas with air strike Germany would abide by Netanyahu arrest warrant and officials from 68 countries attend Iranian president funeral in Tehran Russian troops recently struck Ukrainian positions in Donbas town of Seversk with a massive FAB 1500 bomb several telegram channels have reported citing a video taken at the scene the footage posted on social media showed multi-story buildings where ukrainian troops had taken up positions being targeted with a 1.5 ton projectile the clip which is less than a minute long first shows what ha- appears to be a group of ukrainian servicemen walking between partially damaged buildings before a projectile hits the area and causes a powerful explosion the video ends with the buildings appearing to be partially destroyed and engulfed in flames German Chancellor Olaf Scholz's government has made it clear that it would cooperate with the International Criminal Court that's ICC if proposed arrest warrants are issued against Israel leaders or alleged war crimes against the Palestinians speaking at a fr- press briefing on Wednesday government spokesman Stefan Hebestreit was asked whether Berlin would execute an 
ICC arrest warrant against Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. The statement came after Israel's ambassador to Berlin, Ron Presso, urged Scholz's administration to defy the ICC. The court's chief prosecutor, Karim Khan, filed applications on Monday for arrest warrants against Netanyahu, Israeli Defense Minister Yoav Gallant, and three Hamas leaders for alleged war crimes and crimes against humanity in the Gaza conflict. High-ranking officials from at least 68 countries attended a ceremony in Tehran on Wednesday to pay respect to Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi and his companions killed in a helicopter crash this weekend. The ceremony was held hours after hundreds of thousands of people took part in a funeral procession in the Iranian capital for Raisi and other killed in Sunday's accident, including Foreign Minister Hussein Amir Abdullah Hain. Foreign dignitaries were received by Acting President Mohammad Mokba, Acting Foreign Minister Ali Bagari Khani, and other government officials. Those who attended the ceremony included Qatar's Emir Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani, Iraqi Prime Minister Mohammad Shia Al Sudani, Pakistan Prime Minister Shabha Sharif, and Azerbaijani Premier Ali Azdar. A large scale funeral was held in Iran's capital Tehran yesterday for the country's late President Ibrahim Raisi. The final rites of Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi will be held today in his hometown, Mashhad. And back to the headlines of the world news. Russia hit Ukrainian positions in Donbas with airstrike. German would abide by Netanyahu arrest warrant. And officials from 68 countries attend Iranian president's funeral in Tehran. And that ends world news. Development news. The government has decided to provide a loan relief package of 5,000 million rupees to micro, small and medium enterprises and industrials who are unable to repay bank loans due to economic crisis and other and who are blacklisted by the Credit Information Bureau. Accordingly, the government will select 1,000 entrepreneurs and industrialists who owe not more than 5 million rupees to the banks and financial institutions and give them 5 million rupees each. A grace period of two years for the repayment of this loan and concessions have been made so that it can be repaid at a very low rate of interest. President Rana Vikram Singh, as a finance minister, has allocated 20,000 million rupees to revive the collapsed businesses while presenting the budget proposals for this year. And that was Development News. Moving on with Sports News. Sri Lankan car racing champion Dilanta Malagamur has won the GT4 car racing competition in Italy. On his arrival at the Katnaga airport yesterday, he said that he was the only Sri Lankan and the only Asian who participated in this tournament. 50 cars participated in this car race where two drivers each joined for one car. Winners of this World Championship Series will be selected after 12 more races throughout the year. Four more races will be held during the next month and Malagamu hopes to win this championship series and bring glory to Sri Lanka. Meanwhile, Sri Lanka Premier League has terminated its contract with Dumbledore Thunders, one of the five participating teams with immediate effect following the arrest of team owner Tamim Rahman in Colombo on Wednesday. He was arrested under the 2019 Prevention of Offences Relating to Sports Act, which relates to corruption. Rahman is a British national of Bangladeshi origin and was arrested prior to boarding a flight in Colombo. The law under which Rahman was arrested was worked on in part by the ICC's anti-corruption unit. And that was Sports News. Go ekatiyana youth ekata life ekate change ekata niya meta set penna Aswa hagena dhenna puhina habe karanna Youth ekata niya meta set penna friendship ekata menna The all new NSB Ithru Mithru account NSB I am a plan for your dream Business News Sponsored by National Savings Bank The safest place for your money The Central Bank of Sri Lanka launched the Financial Literacy Roadmap of Sri Lanka, marking a significant step towards enhancing the financial capabilities of Sri Lankans in Colombo Tuesday. This roadmap, a cornerstone of Sri Lanka's national financial inclusion strategy, offers evidence-based guidance to all stakeholders engaged in financial literacy initiatives, aligning them towards a common objective, improving the financial behavior of Sri Lankans and bolstering their financial resilience. De- developed through collaborative efforts among various stakeholders led by the Central Bank through the NFIS Secretariat and the Regional Development Department. The roadmap sets out to foster financial inclusion, enhance consumer protection and fortify financial stability. And that was Business News. 
Business News sponsored by National Savings Bank the safest place for your money go ekakiyana youth ekat life ke change ekat niyamata set karna as wahagena dekh pugina hame karna youth ekat niyamata set karna friendship ekat menna your new nsb ithrumitru account nsb i am a plan for your dream On to economic news, State Minister of Urban Development and Housing Arundhik Fernando announced that state enterprises are now open to private sector investments, but only at the government's assessed value. This directive aligns with President Ranil Wickremesinghe's instruction that state enterprises should not be offered for private sector investments below their assessed value. The state minister highlighted the revival of regional development projects that were previously halted due to economic difficulties. State Minister for Urban Development and Housing Arundhik Fernando made these remarks at a press briefing. being held at the presidential media center yesterday under the theme collective path to a stable country and that was economic news with a report The southwest monsoon conditions are gradually establishing over the island hence the prevailing showery and windy conditions will continue further showers or thunder showers will occur at times in the western sabragama central northwestern southern and northern provinces very heavy showers about 150 mm are likely at some places in the sabragama province and in the kandia and nuarelia districts heavy showers about 100 mm are likely at some places in the western and northwestern provinces and in the managol and mathra districts showers or thunder showers will occur at several places elsewhere of the island And before we conclude this news broadcast the headlines again the government affirms that the elections in the country would be held according to the time frame of the constitution a joint development plan will be implemented for the bingire export processing zone Buddhists all over the world celebrate the Vesak full moon poi day today. The water levels of many irrigation tanks have increased due to the prevailing rainy weather condition. Fresh cassette notification has been issued stipulating the daily minimum wage for estate workers. Foreign news, Russia hit Ukrainian positions in Donbas with air strike and in sports, LPL terminates contract with Dumbledore Thunders following owner's arrest. And with that we end this news broadcast from the Sri Lanka Broadcasting Corporation and handing over the microphone back to Hesh Samat on the other side this Thursday afternoon to continue with the rest of the programs. Over to you, Heshma.